What is up, boys? Today is the day we get to review Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Now, I am a pretty big Chris Pratt fan. I'm a pretty big Guardians of the Galaxy fan. I'm a pretty big Marvel fan. So, to say I was excited for this movie was a bit of an understatement. I think the first Guardians of the Galaxy is top three MCU. I have my issues with the second one, but I still think it's a very enjoyable film. So, I was really hyped going into three, especially seeing how the last, like, six Marvel movies have kind of been disappointing. I was really hoping for James Gunn to kind of turn that around and today I want to talk and let's debate if he did or not now Guardians of the Galaxy 3 obviously I just want to get it out of the way right away some of the best soundtrack in any movie ever especially in Marvel Cinematic Universe I think the soundtrack has always been phenomenal this movie has just as good of a phenomenal soundtrack I mean you put Radiohead in a fucking Guardians of the Galaxy movie you got my vote right there so yeah nothing to complain about with the soundtrack and I just wanted to kind of get that out of the way first thing because you have to mention with Guardians of the Galaxy, but there's not much to mention because it's great. This is going to be a spoiler-free review, by the way. Uh, now that the soundtrack's out of the way, I do want to make it preface that this is spoiler-free. Don't have to worry about getting spoiled. This is just my quick thoughts on the movie after seeing it a couple nights ago. I thought the story was okay. I didn't think the story was anything like fantastic, mind-blowing. It's a pretty straightforward narrative, but it does its job and it works to give these characters a nice send-off for the MCU, or at least most of them a nice send-off, and it does that job well. I thought the story worked. It was one of the better ones in the Marvel Cinematic Universe right now at balancing comedy and seriousness. This movie has some of the funniest laugh-out-loud moments in the MCU, but it also takes its time to let some of the serious moments be serious and let dark moments really sink in for a bit and that's something the MCU has been doing really bad at recently so the fact that this movie just let that happen and do its thing was a nice change of pace and I think that's something James Gunn has gotten better with and I think he learned his lesson because I thought Guardians 2 didn't do that very well I thought it kind of went overboard on some of the jokes sometimes to see him you know dial that back a bit for the Suicide Squad and now Guardians 3. It really seems like James has learned his lesson on that. So yeah, the story, very well done. Comedy, like mentioned before, some absolute laugh out loud moments. I think there's some great setup for the jokes. There's just a couple jokes that go on a bit too long and it's like, okay, we get it. It was funny at first, but we can move on now. It's overstated, it's welcome. But for the most part, the jokes land. I thought all the performers do a great job. Like I said before, Chris Pratt's my favorite actor. I think he's doing really, he, I think he's bringing his best here. The other ones I think who do their best job is easily, this movie's obviously a lot more Rocket and Bradley Cooper focused. And I think, I get it's a voice acting position, but still there's, there's some moments where he has some passion in that voice. Also, I mean, can we talk about Nathan Fillion's character? Uh, he's in the trailer, so this isn't a spoiler that Nathan Fillion's in the movie, but damn, his character, he, he has a small little role, but it's one of the funnier parts of the movie, and it's just, he's, he steals the scenes he's in, like, for the little bit he's in it. One of the best parts of the movie is Nathan Fillion's character. <laughs> I thought it was really nice to see Drax be put more in the front line. He actually gets some moments to shine. He's not just a side character that's comedy related. He actually got some of his own moments. And that's another thing I think they did really well is balancing out time for each of the Guardians. In the past films, you know, it's kind of felt like Mantis and Drax and some of those other characters were kind of you know sidelined a little bit and weren't like the main ones which they aren't but they never really got any screen time whatsoever they did retcon that here they do actually do a really good job at giving every guardian like a good bit in their own spotlight to shine and do their own thing and really have their moments and that was something that was done really well because that's something that hasn't been done well in previous guardians films i thought the villains here now while the villains the villains were both really cool uh, obviously Adam Warlock and the High Evolutionary are the villains. I was a bit let down by them. I can't really get too much into it because of spoilers, but the High Evolutionary, I just didn't really understand his motives. They were never really delved into that much. He was a cool villain, and he's great for the movie, but, and uh, I can never pronounce the actor's name who plays, who portrays him, but he's a very good actor. And he does a great job here, but it's just, I never really saw, like, why? Why are you doing this, huh? Like, wh what happened? And Adam Warlock, I mean, he's just been teased for so long, and it, ah, I just didn't love what they did with this character. You'll see when you see the movie. I can't really get into it here, but I wasn't a big fan of what they did with Adam Warlock in this movie, which is sad, because I was really hyped to see him. 
and I love Will Poulter, so I was really hyped to see him get one of these big roles. And the fact that they kinda didn't really do something great with him is kind of upsetting to me. So the villains aren't great here, but I think that's fine because no one's really expecting the best villains. They, they come to the Guardians films for Guardians, you know? None of the Guardians films have had the best villains. I guarantee 90% of the population can't even tell you what the villain's name was in the first Guardians movie. The fact alone that these are at least memorable villains, I think that's more in due to the actors portraying the villains and the performances they give than the actual villains themselves. But it's still nice to see Adam Warlock pop up and the High Evolutionary, like I said before, is still cool. But it's just I never really understood or liked what they did most, like liked what they did with them most of the time, if that makes sense. The action here is really good. I thought the action was all phenomenal. I was in the second row in the theater while watching this film, so it was kind of hard to like keep like track of it. <laughs> I don't know. I've never been that close to a screen before. I was super close this time and it was like I was having to like fling my head around trying to keep up with it so if you're a bit farther back maybe it's a bit easier to follow it like flung around to the different characters a lot to you know give them all their moment in the action so it was hard to follow if i was sitting really close in the theater some really good action probably some of the best in the guardians films there's one sequence in particular that was like this kind of one take but it wasn't one take but it was supposed to feel like a one take scene that was actually super cool that was like an actual dope ass fight i really enjoyed that overall i don't know if i have much more to talk about i mean the comedy generally is hitting on all cylinders like it always does in guardians films the music's fantastic the story's serviceable for what it's trying to do the villains are cool in theory but leave a lot to be desired and all the characters i mean all the main protagonist characters are all just as charming and as captivating as they always are in guardians films so i think for all those reasons this is going to get an 80 out of 100 on the official review scale because yeah it's just it's a fantastic movie it's nice to actually come out of a marvel movie and have my expectations met i wouldn't say this movie blew me away or exceeded all my expectations but my expectations were already pretty high going into it so the fact that it just met them is an accomplishment to me and i think it well deserves an 80 out of 100 because of that and i think a lot of people will have the same thoughts and they'll come out enjoying this film as well which for a lot of people it's been a while since they've walked out of a marvel movie and actually enjoyed it so yeah overall go see this movie it's fantastic it's a nice fun time